Hi everyone, welcome to Sal Reads. I'm Asia, and today we are going to do a DNF update. Usually, I keep this list to be on the worst books that I read for the previous year, but that video is usually pretty long and I just figured I would do an update and then the next year I will just do like the last six months of the year. So far, I already have 19 books that I've DNF'd, which isn't like a lot, but I know if I would have did all of the year's DNF's in one video it probably would have been 40 minutes and i don't really want to do that let's go ahead and get started i have a few books that like i don't even remember the book at all so i'm probably gonna have to refer to my story graph so i can remember why i dnf'd it but this first one i actually do remember so the first one that i dnf'd is a daughter of the missing and this is one of those books that i got from one of the free kindle sale things that they do and this one wasn't terrible. I feel like the concept was interesting because it follows this young woman who doesn't really know like her history or anything but it turns out that she's a part of this like merfolk tribe thing that was done wrong. The prologue was very interesting because it almost had like a pre-colonial Africa kind of feel um, except they were mer people but then like there was somebody that came and basically ruined their lives so i have like this very interesting like setup but i think where my problem came in is one once you actually get to the young woman's perspective i did not like reading her perspective at all like she just became kind of annoying to follow and i don't want to say that she's annoying because i only dnf the 17 percent end but yeah, I just could not get like a vibe with her and I honestly think that was because of the writing which is the main reason why I DNF this book because the writing was almost feeling like it was like head hopping to all of these different perspectives and when I was talking to like one of my editor friends about it she was like they're not necessarily like head hopping but they're not really like doing the transitions from like one character's head to another so I feel like it was third person omniscient but it wasn't like doing the transitions between like switching a character's like point of view well and I think that just kept leaving me jarring and I just was not interested anymore which is kind of a shame because like I said it did have a very interesting premise but the writing definitely was not the best. The next one that I have is one that I don't actually remember much about and that book is The Splinter and the Sky and honestly the reason why I didn't have this book is just because I just wasn't interested like I just was not interested in this character trying to get her sister back and that's pretty much the extent of it. That's probably why I don't really remember much about it because I just wasn't invested in anything going on and I'm kind of sad about that but then again like I'm not very called to pick it up again just to give it a try so I don't think it was going to leave any lasting impression on me. The next one that I DNF'd is Owned by Siren Crow. This one was very sad for me because I love the covers of this series but I just I am so tired of the alpha male kind of thing. You're following these like fae princes or whatever. They're all brothers and they basically have to take brides. I didn't even get to that part. Like I literally DNF this at 4% and I was just not vibing with the character. It was the male main character who I don't know he became like the king and uh, like their anger issues and just that whole thing was just not for me plus I feel like the writing could have been better one of the things I wrote in my story graph was like one of the quotes I was just like I am not gonna vibe with this writing at all and that quote was like his suggestion caused an uproar amongst males who were already agitated. I hadn't even known I was capable of such vile profanities, curses leaving my lips like a mother tongue. I don't, I don't care. I don't like those kinds of male protagonists for my love interest. And yeah, I'll leave it at that. The next one that I DNF'd also because of the writing is The Ashbury Kings. This literally read like it was a first draft of a novel. And I don't say that to be like mean, but just from like the first few pages, like you can tell that this author is still learning the craft of writing because yeah, it was just not 
that good and I also feel like I was set up for the wrong expectations because I thought that this was a fantasy romance and it kind of is I guess like it's more paranormal I would think because they're wolves. The writing is very contemporary and very simple for lack of a better word so I didn't have that one at four percent. Another one I couldn't get into was Girlfriends and Their Secrets and this was just like a prequel or something that I read um because I had it from one of those free sales or whatever and again I really just could not get into the writing of this one I think like the Ashbury Kings like this one read very simple and that's not like necessarily a bad thing but it was just a little too early writer for me to really want to read it so I didn't have that one at three percent. The next one is one that I could see myself going back to potentially because I feel like the beginning had a very interesting setup but this book is More Perfect by Tommy O. Oh. This one is like a I want to say like a futuristic dystopian kind of society but it's not really like dystopian like it felt very realistic because there's this flood that comes to I believe London and all of these people end up dying and after these people end up dying it's just kind of like the aftermath of that but then also there's like these weird like things that they do with like their eyes or something that just like allows them to see like the news like 24 7 or something and they're just like always connected and there's a group of people that don't want that to happen and then there's a group of people that are just solely embracing it and you're following these two characters that are on opposite sides one of them grew up from like an activist parent who was a rebel and was basically killed for doing that and the other one is trying to embrace the technology but her mother won't let her and so i felt like it was a very interesting world i I really like Temi O's craft of writing and I'm very interested to read more by this author but I just felt like the story was a little too slow for me like this book is over 500 pages and I don't necessarily think that it needed to be plus there was like, so many things that were being introduced in terms of just like the speculative elements of this society that I wasn't necessarily getting lost but I was just getting confused on like where the story was heading and like why these elements were being introduced but like I said I do think that the writing was strong in this one and I'm curious to know if it was really like my mood that wasn't really making me want to read this anymore so this might be one that I pick up again but for now I DNF this one at 27%. The next one that I have is another one where I feel like the expectations that I had for this one were a little bit off and this is My Grandfather's Inheritance, The Fox. This one had like a myriad of things that I just could not connect with. While there was parts that I laughed at because the female main character, she had like a little sense of humor to her, the other parts could not really make me want to push through. First, I thought that this was a fantasy romance and it's not. At least the beginning does not feel like it is. It feels very contemporary, maybe even a little historical because there's flashbacks that happen. But the flashbacks, like I said, they don't feel fantasy. They feel more historical. And I feel like it had like interesting historical elements because I feel like they were actually dealing with like artifacts and stuff being stolen from them. I believe that was this book but I could be wrong but I feel like I remember that being in this book which I thought was very interesting because in these flashbacks you basically have the story of a prince that is leaving his kingdom and just like the ramifications of that and while I could probably guess why that connected to the present it just wasn't really connecting for me in terms of the like, writing I thought there was pacing issues like it felt way too slow I got to 22% of the story and they were still in the coffee shop uh, like they were meeting in like a coffee shop element and they didn't even go to the place that they've been saying that they were going to go to for like the last 10 percent of the book and yeah this is just another one where i felt like the craft could have been better and it could have been a stronger story the next one that i dnf is so let them burn i decided to dnf this one at 10 percent because one i just felt like it was very generic like it was just a generic YA fantasy to me and i could read that from the very beginning i didn't really care about the character and this is supposed to be Caribbean inspired but as much Caribbean literature as I've read even though I'm not a part of the culture 
I feel I can honestly say that this book did not read Caribbean at all. This one felt like a generic YA fantasy that could have been like interchanged with any other myriad of cultures. And of course, there was like the little language here and there, but like when you talk about like the infusion of Caribbean culture, this book just did not do that. And there's way better books that actually do that if you're looking for Caribbean authors to support. And I'll just leave it at that because honestly, I don't think most people have actually liked this book. So I think I dodged a bullet with DNFing it. The next one is one that I could potentially pick up again, but honestly, I probably won't. I DNF this one at 10% and it just felt way too Beauty and the Beast for me. Like again, you have this character that has like anger communication issues like I don't know what it is with these people writing these kind of characters but it's starting to get boring and it's starting to get very repetitive. I thought the mythology element could have been interesting but I just was not that interested in continuing this series because like I said I don't really want to read about male protagonists like this so yeah, I DNF that one. The next one I DNF much further in, and that is Thicker Than Water. And this one I DNF at 45%. This one I could have pushed through, but I just wasn't interested in doing that. Like, I feel like I wasn't really getting much from the story. I think I got more about like her acting career and stuff. And I guess that was kind of interesting, but I just wasn't that invested in it. Like sometimes she did go into like her past trauma which is definitely very personal and bold of her to do. Like a lot of other celebrity memoirs, I feel like that was the more intriguing part to me because it's not a side of Carrie Washington that I even knew about. But I feel like most of the book was about like her career and I don't really care about her career like that. Like I like her acting roles and stuff, but um, I don't think I want to read a whole book about it. The next one I DNF is Feybound and I'm actually surprised that I got 38% into this book because what? Like I don't even remember half of this book. The only thing I remember about this book is that it follows two sisters. There was like a little hint of a romance that I knew was not going to be done well at all and that there's some kind of creature that one character is bonded with. That's pretty much all I remember. I don't think that the writing was spectacular. I don't think that the world was very spectacular. I don't think Sarah L. Arifi is the writer for me. I don't vibe with her writing and I don't really like the worlds that she creates. And honestly, I feel like the plot of this story was just very predictable and basic. And the last thing that I had a problem with is that these characters are like in their early 30s, I believe, but they sound like they are literally like 15, 16. The next one that I read was very similar in that like the age part of it was just kind of off-putting for me and that is The Smoke That Thunders. This book was kind of disappointing and I was expecting a little bit more because the publisher is from Norton and I'm pretty sure they publish all of those textbooks that you have to buy in college so I was expecting much better writing and that's not what I got. Thinking back on this book like I do not know if this was supposed to be YA or if it's supposed to be middle grade. The writing reads as if it's supposed to be middle grade but the content feels very YA and I don't even want to say that it's like young YA because I just don't know if younger YA readers would have wanted to read this book. Like I don't know. I just feel like the writing definitely could have been better. I feel like the scene transitions were very jarring and they didn't really seem to connect with each other. And it just felt like the scenes were very much like disjointed in that like it felt like it could have kept going to get to like the point that the scene was supposed to have and then it wouldn't. I also just don't think that this story had any like interesting elements about it. Like it honestly just read like a typical story that you would find and it was trying to do this like conversation between like a sister that wants to have the traditional life versus the sister that doesn't and of course the main character is the one that doesn't but I feel like it wasn't really trying to do that conversation well. Like I just felt like it fell into that trap of, oh, I'm a strong woman. I don't need a man. I don't want to do this. And that's fine. But I don't know. I just wish there was like more depth to the conversation about that. But like I said, like this story, I'm not sure where 
it really lands in terms of being for young adult readers where you could explore those topics a little bit but also being for middle grade where I don't feel like a topic like that would be explored at all so yeah I don't know I don't know I DNF'd it the next one is another one that I DNF'd at 40% and this is one that I could have continued probably I thought it was fine the way that it was I guess but my main issue with it is that it had pacing issues I was 40% into the book and I feel like she didn't even like set off on the adventure yet like it was still like leading up to the adventure and granted as I was DNFing it was starting to be a little bit more interesting because you're introduced to this like magical character that I was very intrigued by but yeah I just I wasn't interested anymore the next one that I DNF'd is the Duke Who Didn't and I think that the setup for this one was not for me I don't think I liked the dynamic of their relationship it wasn't really feeling very romantic especially because they had this previous relationship before so you didn't really see them like trying to be romantic with each other in terms of building up that romance because it's based off of the past things what it's really trying to do is just convince her to marry him and there's like the secret of who he is who which is like the duke but yeah, I just was not interested. I go into a romance wanting to see that romantic relationship built between them, but this was really just them denying their feelings for each other and not necessarily in the angsty way that I like. So yeah, I DNF that one. The next one I DNF'd is The No Family, and I thought this could have been interesting. It was giving me crazy rich Asian vibes and there was going to be like a little bit of a story with like her rich family like using her for their gains and this one was one that I probably could have finished but honestly I just wasn't really that invested in it. I was fine with just reading the reviews to see what happened and I'm satisfied with that so I DNF'd it at 24%. The next one that I DNF is The Little Time Allotted Us and this one I was just plain confused on what was going on. Like the main character has memory issues but there's also a lot of action stuff going on but then also the main character has like some kind of like AI chip or something in their head I think and so you're getting like two different voices from the same character yeah I I don't know what I read and I reread this from the beginning like twice and I was still confused on what was going on so I just decided to DNF it the next one I DNF was A Gamble at Sunset I was struggling with this one I thought it could have been interesting getting into like my Regency era vibe but one, I think I found I'm not a Regency era kind of reader. Like, I don't want to read the books from the Regency era. I can watch the TV show, but reading the books, probably not for me. The second thing is I was more invested in a different relationship than the main character's relationship, which I don't really know why it was included in this book in the first place. Like, it just seemed like there was like so much drama with that relationship. And I just wanted to know the history with that one rather than the one that we were supposed to be focusing on. And the third thing, the one we were focusing on, it's between a white guy and a black woman. And of course, there's racism during this time. And so when news gets out that they're courting and all of that, you get somebody that draws a racist cartoon. And that's when I knew I was done with the story. The next one I DNF'd is The Scepter by Jay Bree. And this one I DNF'd at 51% as well. This one, I think it could have been interesting. Like I liked the beginning part of it, but like most prequels, I don't think authors really know how to write them. They don't ever really feel like a complete story to me. Like they just feel like they want to offer a freebie because... The beginning was way too long. They were traipsing through the woods like way too long in my opinion. And then when we get through this like little end to say the night, that's when like this new element is introduced. And I was just like, I don't care. I'm not going to read any more of this. I might read the first book in the series, but I'm not reading this author's other prequels because I just, I don't, I don't. No, I don't think it was done well. And the next book that I have is a book that I really wanted to like, but there was just like a few things that was wrong with it for me. And this book is The Wolf of Aran Yarrow. 
I was very intrigued with the premise of this one just with like what they call her and everything and that's not the kind of character that I got from this. I feel like it had some pacing issues and way too many like flashbacks which I think contributed to the pacing issues but yeah the flashbacks I was just like why are there so many and then in the present day like she didn't really seem like a badass character that was really being built up in the summary. I could have been very interested in this world though. Like I liked being in the world, but as I just kept going and the same problems just kept coming up, I was just like, I'm just going to DNF this. And so I DNF'd it at 41%. And the last book that I DNF so far is Innocent Intent by Casey Mills. And this one I'm actually kind of disappointed by because I was really in a thriller mood and this book was just taking me out so much. When I requested this book on NetGalley, I literally thought it was just gonna be a straight up thriller. I knew this author wrote romance and that's why I was like oh this shift could be like interesting so I wonder how the author is going to do it and I think that they should have pitched this book as like a romantic suspense or something because the thriller part of this was not good at all. I should have known from the beginning of this book that this was going to have more romance than it was going to be more like thrilling because they spent so much time setting up the characters and just where they are mentally and I was just like I don't really care and especially because like I'm not big into like detective mystery thrillers but I was just like this could be like interesting it could be like a fast-paced kind of thriller as you're trying to figure out like what's happening but yeah the slow start was not a good thing for it and then I just feel like there wasn't really much agency with the character until maybe like the 20 or something percent mark. I just really did not care about the drama that was happening with the detective and his co-workers and I just did not care about the other background information that was introduced and then there's like some spicy scene with like the detective that goes to like a fade to black and I was just like you're losing the focus of what a thriller is even supposed to. And while I was reading this I was trying to go back and see like did I just miss that this was supposed to be like a romantic kind of thing because there's also this growing attraction between them and no I did not miss that. They did not mention that this was going to be a romance in the, the description and I feel like if I would have came in with those expectations I probably would have liked this better and probably would have pushed through it and I was still going to push through it but I realized that I don't care about these characters falling in love. I really want to see who actually was the murderer of her husband and because of the way that this was written and because they're trying to build the romance between these two characters I don't care. I don't care anymore. That wraps up all the DNS that I have so far for the 2024 year. I hope that you have enjoyed seeing me kind of rant on some of these books. If there are any of the books that I mentioned that you think I should give another chance, I will maybe be open to listening, but I feel like most of them I'm probably not going to pick up again, especially the ones that don't have good writing. But if you don't want to leave a comment like that, you can just leave a blue emoji since there's blue on the cover for innocent intent. But I thank you for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye!